What are the worst jobs in human history? Let's find out. Groom of the Stool In ancient times, the English king's household had a male servant known as the Groom of the Stool, who was in charge of helping the king with his bathroom needs. The groom was believed to have been in charge of providing a bowl, water and towels, as well as keeping tabs on the king's nutrition and bowel movements, and speaking with the royal doctor about the king's health. It is debatable whether the tasks included cleaning up the king's business once he was done, but many believed that it too was a part of the job. Whipping Boy In early modern Europe, a whipping boy was a boy educated with a prince who supposedly received corporal punishment for the prince's offences in front of him. Because of his higher royal rank than his tutor, the prince was spared punishment. However, witnessing a friend punished would serve as a similar warning to future offences. Back in the day, the common tutor punishment at the time was the whipping. There is an old saying called, to beat a dog before a lion, which perfectly describes this job, as the whipping boy used to be beaten up for absolutely no fault of his and probably did not even receive an apology from the bratty princes and monarchs of the time as they simply did not care. Tosha a sewer hunter, or Tosha, is someone who scavenges in the sewers, particularly in Victorian-era London. The thieves who stole priceless copper from the hulls of ships docked along the Thames were also referred to as Toshas. However, we are particularly referring to the sewer hunters. While there is not much information about Toshas in the books, it is believed to have been one of the most torturous jobs ever with the pay being the bare minimum, or in most believed cases, absolutely nothing. These people would literally be around excrement all day looking for treasures. Pure Finders Finding something pure may appear to be a harmless job, but in Victorian times it was possibly the dirtiest kind of scavenging, since the pure they were hunting for was actually dog poop. Pure finders were frequently seen following dog walkers and picking up the feces that dogs would leave behind. They were collecting it to sell to tanneries in the London area, so that they could use it for tanning leather. While this has all the reasons to be one of the worst jobs in history, the reason why we would not rank it lower is that some people actually made quite a lucrative career out of it. Pure finders were only hired by wealthy individuals who could afford any amount to have the work that they wanted to avoid be done by someone else. Hence, it attracted many people to work as pure finders in the evenings when most dogs were taken out for their walks. Wool Fullers Before the invention of fabric softeners, people had a pretty odd method for making cloth feel more comfortable against their skin. The people hired to do this work were known as fullers, because they essentially fulled the cloth they were working with their feet. Although it does not sound like a very unpleasant job, there is a part of what the role included that is definitely disgusting. Believe it or not, the ideal solution for softening clothes was stale urine. The urine contains ammonium salts that help clean and soften the fabric as well as brighten white garments. Because of how often urine was used for fulling, it was even taxed back in the day, which not only makes it sound awful, but even makes you wonder how haunting the life of a fuller could be. Sin Eater A sin eater is someone who consumed a ritual meal in order to absorb the sins of a recently deceased person. It was thought that eating a recently deceased person's sins would cleanse their soul and pass their sins on to someone else. It is also said that the ceremonial meal would be placed on the chest of the dead corpse. As a result, sin eaters carried the sins of everyone whose sins they had consumed, and they were generally feared and shunned by the community around them in order to avoid being cursed by the sins that they carried. This so-called job is assumed to have originated from Wales, but no one knows how much sin eaters were paid. Imagine doing this every day eating off a dead person's chest. Anyway. Plague Bearers 
In London, the plague claimed 69,000 lives in 1665. Government regulations required the collection and burial of victims during the night. The corpses were collected by plague bearers, who were hired by the parishes to roam the streets at night. Putting them in mass graves, in churchyards, they put their lives in danger by spending their evenings among plague victims and rotting bodies. And because they had to live there to prevent spreading the disease to others, they spent their days among those very bodies in the churchyard. As you may have assumed, the name came from the fact that they were collecting bodies of plague-infected people and were very possibly carrying it forward. Lime Burners there are many uses for lime. Quick lime, a product used by tanners and dyers, was created by breaking it and heating it for many days to roughly 800 degrees. Slaked lime, which was used in mortar and whitewash, was made by soaking quick lime in water. In addition to the heat, a lime burner's job was highly dangerous. Because it is highly unstable and caustic, quick lime reacts aggressively to water. It is able to steam, spit, and even explode. Due to its extreme risk, it was occasionally thrown at enemies as a weapon to induce painful burning in their eyes, mouths, or anywhere else where sweat was present. And these lime burners had to interact with such a deadly product every single day for over 10 hours a day. Petardier When attacking enemy castles, a petard was a tiny bomb that was used to blow away gates and walls. It was created in France in the 16th century. A typical petard was a conical or rectangular metal object with a slow match as a fuse and five to six pounds of gunpowder inside. The word petard was derived from the word to fart in Middle French, and petardiers were the ones responsible for operating these highly unstable and deadly tools. It was as likely that they would kill themselves than harm the enemy's castle while using a petard. The phrase hoist by your own petard which refers to having your plan ruined, originated from the regular incidents of petardier being killed by their own bombs. Now, let us check out Gong Farmer. The growing urban population's bodily waste was an issue before the introduction of effective drainage. While London, like many other cities, offered houses of convenient public restrooms for a population of about 30,000 people, in the late 14th century there were only 16 of those available. So instead, during the Middle Ages, people pooped in a privy. A privy would typically consist of a raised board with one or several openings cut in the middle where the user would sit and do their thing. Their poop would plop into the holes in the cesspits beneath it. Eventually, these cesspits would fill up and start overflowing. This is where the gong farmer's role came into the picture. Gong farmers, also known as nightmen, were responsible for digging out and carrying away all of the human waste in small bags and were only allowed to work at night so that no one could see what they were doing. Paid by the amount that they would end up collecting, they spent the entire night buried to their neck or waist in human waste in deep pits in order to fully clean out the waste. Some people suffocated or died of diseases that they would contract in these pits. It was hardly a dream job for those who were still alive. However, this job was quite essential at the time and was quite well paid because of that. It was said that gong farmers were paid two shillings per tonne of waste removed, which is equivalent to around 66 pounds when converted to today's money. That's all we have for today. Which job was the worst according to you? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and be sure to check out more videos from our pages in history. Thanks for watching.